And this morning, we are going to be blessed because our message today is from two of our mighty adventurers. Uh, Junior Kirk, who is, a, uh, who is seven years old and is a first grader at CACS, and he's currently a busy bee in the adventurers. And we also have Preference Chola, who is eight years old is in, and is in second grade and is a sunbeam in adventurers. And today they decided on a theme, and their theme today is obedience. So this, this morning, soon to be preacher Junior Kirk is going to walk us through the kings of Judah in 2 Chronicles and show us why obedience is important. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Junior Kirk and I'm in adventure. Today, as Pastor Powell said, our theme is obedience. But is obedience that big of a deal? Does it really matter if we are obedient to God? Well, this morning, I'm going to walk you through the lives of the kings of Judah and see if obedience mattered for them. The first king we're going to look at is, king, is Rehoboam, who was son of Solomon. He was king from 19, uh, 931 B.C. to 1913 B.C. And he was disobedient to, the, to God because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. There it is. The next king was Abijah. I mean, it was King Abijah who was king from... 1913 B.C. to 1911 B.C., only two years. He followed in the way of his father and disobeyed God. King Asa was king for 41 years, and he was obedient to the Lord. However, he is proof that we must always seek and obey God. Because in his old age, he got a disease in his feet. And instead of going to God, he trusted the doctors, so he died. <laughs> King Josephus ruled as his father as did mm -hmm. his father did mm -hmm. and he never took his eyes off God and his kingdom was blessed and prospered during his leadership he was king for 25 years Jeroho the next king was Jeroham who did not follow or obey God. He was only king for eight years. And when he died, the people of Israel did not bury him in the tombs of kings, nor did they mourn for him. Ah, King Ahaziah followed in the way of his father and, he, and didn't in obey God and was only king for one year. At the lie was the mother of Ahaziah and she did not obey God and tried to kill all the heirs to the throne. So she was going to kill all the descendants of of David, which were the sons of Ahaziah. <laughs> Joash. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he followed and obeyed God. So no matter how old you are, you are never too old or too young to follow God. Amen. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he regained for 29 years. 
He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But the Bible says that he did not have a loyal heart. And because of that, he took his eyes off God. Uh, because he, and he, because of that, he took his eyes off God, of God and stopped following God's commands. Because of that, his time was, as king, was cut short. Mm. Uh, Isaiah became king at the age of 16. He followed and obeyed God. And the Bible says that God made him prosper. Not, nonetheless, his pride got to him and he entered the most holy place of the sanctuary, which no one but the priests were supposed to enter. And he got leprosy and died. Jonathan did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and obeyed God. He was king for 16 years and had peace in the kingdom. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king. He did not follow God. In fact, he cut up all the articles of the temple and bordered God's temple up so that no one could enter in it. And instead, he made temples for himself instead of God, mm. making something just for you instead of making something for someone else that's more important than you. Mm. was the best king since David. He followed and obeyed God. He wasn't perfect, but he tried to follow God by reopening and cleansing the temple of God and by bringing back the worship of God in the temple. And during his time as king, he, 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 brought, he brought back he brought back, brought back the act the worship of the past of the Passover, which hadn't been observed since Solomon and David's time. Mm -hmm. But Hezekiah's son Manasseh undid everything his father did, ruined your father's work after many years of working on it, while it's while your great grandfather destroys it. Mm. He did not obey God, and he rebuilt all the temples to other gods. They disobeyed so much that God had the king of Assyria come and attack Judah. They took King Manasseh captive, and it was during the captivity that Manasseh gave his heart back to God, which shows that it's never too late to give our hearts to God. Amen. Um, Amon did not obey God and was only king for two years until he was killed. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, so one year before Joash became king. And he was king for 31 years. Mm -hmm. 31 years of peace in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He obeyed God and he found the book of the law and restored the true and restored true worship to God. The king prospered under him. However, he disobeyed God and went to war against the Egyptians and was killed. Mm. So killing from Josiah, from Rehoboam to Josiah. Mm -hmm. Back then, in order to become king, the old king must die in order for you to become king. Mm -hmm. And you had to be the king's son mm -hmm. in Judah. Because in Judah, 
It was the descendants of David. Up north, it was different kings. Mm -hmm. Like Jeroboam, Nadab, Asha. They all were from a different families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jehoahaz Je uh, was only king for three months. Mm -hmm. The shortest we gained. Jerichim was king for 11 years, much longer than just three months. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't obey God. So even though he had a long regime for 11 years, he did not obey God. <laughs> so not added to the, to the good list. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> so after that, so God had the Babylonians attack Jerusalem, but he still wouldn't obey God after a terrible moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so God gave him into the hands of the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. when they should be treated good by the Lord if they only obeyed God. God. Amen. Jerashid was eight years old when he became king and he did not obey God again. Mm. So he only regained for three months and ten days. Mm. Much longer than Jehoahaz, his great grandfather, <laughs> which was only king for just three months, and that's all. Boom, mm. poof, away. <laughs> <laughs> Zedekiah was the last king of Judah. He did not obey God, nor would he humble himself before God. So God took the kingdom for his hands. Mm -hmm. So he, he was partly good, but not very good than his great, great, great grandfather Jehoahaz, which was only king for three months. Mm -hmm. Poof, and then poof away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after that, the Babylonians came to attack the whole entire Judah. Mm. During Jerichim, it was just Jerusalem. Jerusalem, bam, away. Mm -hmm. And then bam, Judah, away. 140 years before the fall of Israel, which was up north, which is poof, away. Mm -hmm. So if God, through the history of the kings of Judah, and including to the Babylonians attacking Judah, they even decided to pluck out the eyes of Zedekiah. This is a punishment for Judah because they did not have enough kings that obeyed God. Mm. Even though Zedekiah was partly good, <laughs> Zedekiah, was was mm -hmm. bad, still on the bad list, but mm -hmm. God said, nope, not good enough. Mm -hmm. So, bam, mm -hmm. his kingdom is away. So, then they're in a big timeout, mm -hmm. waiting for a long time until exile and return. So if we go into the history of the kings of Judah and we learn that obedience matters. The kings that followed and obeyed God prospered, while the kings who disobeyed God, which is right over there, <laughs> were kings for long. <laughs> the shortest regain was Jehoahaz, that I re that it was right there, <laughs> who was only king for three months in three. Just three months. That was all. <laughs> and then poof away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay.
We are never too young or too old to follow and obey God. And even if we have never obeyed God, like Manasiah, before he was taken captive by the Babylonians, which is right there, mm-hmm. after he has. It is never. He did not follow God, which was, is very terrible. Like, and it is never too late to start obeying him. Like, Manasiah, he gave his heart to God after he was taken captive mm-hmm. by the Babylonians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why should we obey God? Because we learn from the kings of Judah, obeying God is for our good. Mm-hmm. But, it, but don't take my war, word for it. Let us see what the Bible says about obedience. Please turn your in your Bibles with me to Matthew 7, 14. So once you got there, then I will read it. And it says, the Bible says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Mm-hmm. Also, please turn with me to Proverbs 8.36. Say amen when you get there. Okay. Has anybody said it? Right? Amen. Okay. But he that sinned gets nef- against me wrong if his own soul all that all day all day all day that hate me love death mm. and finally turn with me to Deuteronomy six twenty four and the Lord command. And the Lord commanded us to do all these stat- statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that He might preserve us alive. Amen. May we all be God, because obedience does matter. Amen. I have a little story to tell you because yesterday, Friday, <laughs> I was playing baseball when it was recess time at CACS. I was playing with this guy named Daniel Perez. He's one of my friends and he accidentally hit my my blue ball, which was my favorite ball, over a fence and we couldn't find it. Only if I had obeyed my mother, which said that if I didn't bring my balls because they would be, be lost. I should have obeyed her instead of taking them to make them be lost. Mm. Well, that was a sad moment for me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Can you stop that laughing stuff? Because that's very interrupting in the sermon. May we all be God because obedience does matter. God bless. God bless. Amen. <laughs> Just as Junior said, obedience does matter, does it not? Yes. But I don't know about you, but obeying is easier said than done, isn't it? Yes. And wouldn't it be nice if there was a key to obeying? Well, this morning, our other mighty preacher, Preference Shola, is going to share with us the key to obedience. Preference? Good morning. Good morning. As Pastor Powell said, this, the, the title of my sermon is called The Key to Obedience. What is obedience? Just the word itself is scary, especially for me as a kid. <laughs> when my teacher told me that we were going to talk about obedience, my heart sank so low that I was not even thrilled to tell mom or my brother. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, when I told them that I, Prophet Shola, is one of the speakers in obedience, is our theme, both of them laughed so hard, and my fear <laughs> came true. In their words, they said, and I quote, really, you, preference, talking about obedience? Th this must be a dream. <laughs> Please talk about love, because love will lead to obedience. Mm. End of quote. <laughs> In my heart, I said, good. If love leads to obedience, then we have something to talk about, not to laugh about. Mm. Do you laugh when you hear the word obedience? Do you get scared like me or simply ignore? Please stand with me as we say our pledge and law. And I'd like to call up my brother DJ to lead in the pledge and the law. I'm waiting for you. Adventure Pledge. Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Adventure Law. Jesus can help me to be obedient, be true, be true, be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be cheerful, be thoughtful, be reverent. Thank you so much. You may sit down. You may sit down too. Big Albert. My story is simple. I don't know a thing about obedience, and most of the time, I know that I didn't obey when my mom asked me whether she told me to do or how I did it. Many of you by now know my medical problem. I was born well, but after two months, my sister, my only sister, Clarity, noticed that I was crying without stopping and the body temperature started rising up. She called mom, and in short, I have lost one kidney. Mm. You may start wondering, what does this story have to do with obedience? And I say, every single part of it. Mm. I take medicine three times a day, and to tell you the truth, I don't like it, and I don't feel like doing it. However, my mom always tells me to obey her by taking medicine, even though I don't agree with her. Mm -hmm. Oh, so obedience has to be there despite how one feels about it, whether you like it or not? Let us read Romans 7, verse 19. Romans 7, verse 19. Say amen when you get there. Romans 7, verse 19. Amen. It says, For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil that I will not to do, that I practice. I was thinking obedience is so hard for us kids. But when I read Romans 7, verse 19, to my surprise, it was a big man Paul. He was fighting with himself. He was struggling just like me, yo. Well, upon reading this, I didn't mind my mom and brother laughing that I'm talking about obedience. So I asked myself, why am I scared of the word obedience? I know for sure that on my own, I cannot obey God. It is not by my power, but the Heavenly Father's power. Amen. That we can all obey. God, our creator. He is the one who made us, and he will help us do good if, we o if only we go to him and cry to him. Do you find yourself doing the things that you know quite as well is bad, but you're doing it anyway? As a kid, it is not easy to obey our parents, but my question to you all is, do you obey God as our father? Mm. When God requires us to meet him every Sabbath, do we obey him? You know, it is easy obeying the rules like going to piano lessons every Monday, waking up early, 
in the morning for school, or going to work, either one, from Monday to Friday. <laughs> but we find it difficult to wake up early for Sabbath worship, and me and my brother are guilty for that. <laughs> we keep doctor's appointments all the time. Birthday parties or just playtime? But do we meet our God every day and talk to him in prayer? Mm. What about when he says, come to church at this time? Do you come on time or give reasons all the time? Mm. If you can keep your appointments, why can't you keep God's appointments? Mm. Jesus gave us a really good example when he was on this earth. Mm -hmm. All he did was to put God first Amen. and everything followed. Jesus, our Savior, obeyed God, our Father. If really love leads to obedience, please let us love our God enough to obey Him. He will help us do good every time. I know it is not easy as a child to obey God, but we are all children of God, Amen. and God Himself will help us trust and obey Him. Therefore, in John 14:15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Let us ask him in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we don't know how to obey you. Please, Lord, create in us a new heart that we can love and obey you. Thank you for listening to our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. May we all obey God this week, and not because we have to, but because we love him.